Hey everyone, it's V, and today I'm going to be doing a try a chapter video. This time it's going to be a sampler edition because when we went to Yelp we got a whole bunch so I've picked these five that I'm particularly interested in. Maddie is going to do another one of these videos very soon with the five that she's most interested in reading so when that's uploaded I will put a link in the cards and in the description. I've decided to go with All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stavata first. Now Maggie and I have not got on in her previous writing, it's not a style I particularly enjoy and I also don't understand the height. I have no idea what it's about as with all of these samplers probably. So the whole thing starts with a science lesson and I'm already like oh god this writing I can't deal with it. The first sentence is you can hear a miracle a long way after dark. Miracles are very like radio waves in this way and then goes on to a science lesson about radio waves and how they bounce off the earth in the ionosphere. Perhaps it doesn't matter when you cultivate invisible seeds you can't expect everyone to agree on the shape of your invisible crops. It is wiser to simply acknowledge that they grow well together. On the night this story begins, both a saint and a scientist were listening to miracles. What does any of that mean? It was mostly quiet except for the radio and the miracles. Oh look, a car reference. Can you tell Maggie Stavata likes cars? If you want to know more specifically why I don't get on with Maggie Stavata's writing, it's because it's like tell, 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 tell. You know, it's not giving you the time to learn any of these things gradually. It's just like, here's everything you need to know about this character. And I think my new details are really great at enhancing a story but when your whole writing is just minute details it can be hard to slog through. Another example is where Joaquin was noisy and colourful, Beatrice was serene and eerie. We're not given the actual examples of this to believe it, we're just told. Also please let it be a meme where wherever he's referred to as Joaquin he then gets called Diablo Diablo in brackets like the page before. He's called Diablo Diablo and then Diablo again. Is that like a reference to something that I'm completely missing? Thing is quite funny though. Just been given a little history of goat birth. And now we've just had some facts about owls. Just keep going with the farm creatures. Furthermore, All the Crooked Saints is definitely not for me. It's not one I'm interested in picking up. And I think this has definitely put the final nail in the coffin of Maggie Stavata and Maya's relationship. I'm going to move on to Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dowell. Uh, I don't know if I've completely butchered that surname, but this is one of Penguin's game changers along with Warcross, Jane Unlimited, There's Someone Inside Your House, and Things I'm Seeing Without You. And the others sound pretty cool, so hopefully I'll like this one. It's fantasy. Let's see how it goes. So far, all I know is it's the story of Zai Feng or Zi Feng. If anyone wants to correct my pronunciation, please do so in the comments. I'd love to know. And she's under the care of her aunt, and another girl also lives in the house called Ning, and they do embroidery for women's fancy silks. There's a little bit of girl on girl hate as they are both going after the same sort of man, and I do believe it's a concubine situation in this world. We obviously have to know that Zi Feng is incredibly beautiful, so who knows where that's going to go in the rest. I actually have the first four chapters in this little sampler so I may as well go ahead and read the rest of it because I am kind of interested to see. And it already looks like it had some great reviews so that's promising. My next pick is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi and I'm quite excited for this one because again it's a chunky one so I'll probably read the first chapter or two and see what I make of it. It starts with some italics thing so this is interesting. Oh well. <laughs> I think about the way her corpse hung from that tree. I think about the king who took her away and that her is referencing the character's mother. So, okay, let's keep going. It starts with a flurry of excitement as two girls are battling in order to win some kind of competition to win what I don't know. Then they're suddenly interrupted by the taxpayer and have to scramble together. He then threatens to kill them and take away all their money. But they manage to convince him to leave and now I'm just in a series of exposition. This kind of exposition, though we have all heard this story at one point or another from Mama Agba, from parents we no longer have, hearing it again doesn't take the awe or wonder away from its words, I always find it a little bit clunky and totally see-through. So we're just having the story of the magic system and how certain people were touched by the gods but now magic has completely disappeared and I assume it's our main character's quest to bring it back. So I really liked what I read of this one, it was about 18 pages long and this sampler that they've given is 77 pages but it doesn't come out until March 8th of 2018 so I'm not going to read any more because once again I don't want to be absolutely desperate for the rest. Loads of people have added it to their to reads, why haven't I followed sooner? <laughs> the author has put, you'll like this book I'm biased but I need to meet my Goodreads challenge 
challenge, so I'm marking this as red. <laughs> That's amazing. It's being published by Pan Macmillan, and I may have to see if I can get an arc of this closer to the time. To mix up the fantasy a little bit, I'm gonna go for Hole in the Middle by Kendra Fortmeyer next. This one says it's already out, so if I like it, then I can try and buy it. The first chapter is only three pages, and the character has like a quirky sense of humour. It's about a girl who literally has a hole in her chest about the size of a fist, and she's just gone through a little like, here are the options for a girl like me. Option number one, not mention it on a first date, and then she runs through that scenario. Or option B, I tell you up front, and then she's got a sort of like dating profile. I'm that semi-cute flat-chested girl bagging groceries at the co-op, quiet, sarcastic INTJ. I love biking and slushies and talking during movies. I've been drawing since I was little and my mum's a manic home DVD celebrity. Also I have a giant hermetically sealed hole in my torso that you could stick a fist through. 17 non-smoker virgin. I don't get many takers. I'll read the next few pages. <laughs> I love the voice of the main character. She's so upbeat despite her condition, it's not all dreary. So I like that it has that sort of charm already and I'm also liking the main characters, what I've met of them so far. Particularly the mother who seems like a bit of an oddball. So I'll be adding this one to my Goodreads as well. Which means the final sampler I have to read is Sorrow by Melinda Salisbury and I saved it till last because I'm hoping to like it. This one again doesn't come out until March 2018 so ages and ages to wait. Oh my goodness, the end to this was so good. The beginning is a little bit boring because it's just setting up this new fantasy world and I'm just so surprised by fantasy authors that they can create like more than one incredibly complex fantasy world. I mean that doesn't always happen. You have authors like Cassandra Clare that continue to write in the same world but just expand it bit by bit but there are also some that just create entirely new systems. So Sorrow is about these two different clans, people, civilizations, and they are separated by a bridge and to sign a peace treaty they have to cross it, but it's sort of impossible to cross, and in doing so, one of the civilizations manages to kill their heir. Luckily it's okay because the queen figure is pregnant, but the baby turns out to be a girl, which is like the worst thing ever in fantasy, and her name is Sorrow. I'm ridiculously excited for this one. I think it's going to be immense. So I pretty much enjoyed all of these apart from all the Crooked Saints. I added all of them to my Goodreads and I'm super excited to get to them. I thought Hole in the Middle was a really fun contemporary and probably a bit of light reading, but maybe I'll try and seek it out from my library first before I buy myself a copy. As for the fantasy side of things, I definitely want to try and get these two in full proofs if I can because I'm very excited to read them. And Forest of a Thousand Lanterns was a little bit of a surprise because I had no idea what to expect and I think it's just the kind of tone of fantasy I look towards. Thank you everyone so much for watching, make sure to let me know which of the books that I read in this trial chapter you would also like to read one day. I'll see you in our next video guys, bye!